Embrace or relive your childhood dreams at Kennedy Space Center, home to space exploration's history and future. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not be governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. Walk through the Rocket Garden to enter the Heroes and Legends exhibit. Inside you will find a replica mission control from the Friendship 7 mission. It was the mission making John Glenn the first American to orbit the Earth. Gemini 9 is tucked into a hallway with its side exposed to see the astronaut space. Each of the 102 inductees in the U.S. Astronauts Hall of Fame have expanded humanity's reach into the heavens. They have left indelible marks on humankind's understanding of the cosmos, and they keep us looking upward to the stars and beyond. Head into the U.S. Astronauts Hall of Fame and see portraits of John Glenn, Sally Ride, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Alan Shepard, and more. Next, head over to the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit where you will see the shuttle itself. Good morning. We're going to create America's next spacecraft. It's going to launch like a rocket and land like an airplane. And it's going to be reusable. Atlantis has carried 207 astronauts on 33 missions over 26 years. During these missions, she spent 307 days in space and flew 126 million miles. Her last mission, and the last mission of the Space Shuttle program, was July 8 through 12, 2011. The Space Shuttle system was made of three components. Twin solid rocket boosters providing 80% of the launch thrust, an external tank providing fuel to the shuttle's main engines during launch, and the orbiter providing a home for the crew during flight. Crews ranged in size from 5 to 7 people with more than 600 flying in the shuttle program missions. Every crewed NASA space flight since 1968 has launched from Kennedy Space Center. The Space Shuttle's main engine is known as the RS-25. It burns cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Each engine produces 418,000 pounds of thrust at liftoff. The shuttle had three of these. They operate at negative 400 degrees up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, higher than the boiling point of iron. A special copper, silver, zirconium alloy was created to withstand these temperatures. After each flight, the engines are removed, inspected, refurbished, and used again. The Space Shuttle was the world's first reusable spacecraft, launching like a rocket, orbiting like a spacecraft, and landing like a plane. The high forces and high heat dictate that the shuttle has short, blunt wings. Because of this, it executes hypersonic S-turns to kill off speed during re-entry. You can take the stairs down or the slide, which mimics the turns.
You might remember one of Airstream's most famous vehicles, the Astrovan. It was used to transport astronauts from the operations and checkout building to the launch pad. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. My fellow Americans, this day has brought terrible news and great sadness to our country. At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine, it is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket. In the skies today, we saw destruction and tragedy. Yet farther than we can see, there is comfort and hope. Looking toward the future, NASA hopes to launch astronauts to Mars by the late 2030s or early 2040s. Making this vision a reality will be challenging. The scientific reasons for doing so are the search for life, understanding the surface and the planet's evolution, and preparing for future human exploration. Having astronauts land on Mars will provide more in-depth research than the previous unmanned rovers could provide.